So Q in every core, just like chicken in every pot. And I have a fairly pretentious, to be honest, pretentious subtitle. Uh, but maybe I'll reach there, or maybe I won't. So Q, as you know, is mostly speaking single-threaded for writing and multiple-threaded for reading. That has been true from a you know, very, very, very long time. And there is even a very good paper by Apta, Shasha, and Whitney uh, talking about why that particular architecture was chosen. And that's because it precludes awful lot of issues dealing with concurrency. And if you've ever done any P-thread style concurrency, you know how painful it is to get anything right. But Q also has IPC. IPC, well, there are two meanings of IPC in general, right? Uh, in Unix world, IPC means uh, you have two processes or more running in the same host. And uh, if you're talking to another remote host, then people say RPC for remote proce procedure calls. But IPC, Q, Q's IPC covers both grounds. So what Q has is that I can, you know, you start another process process somewhere else, either on your machine or somewhere else, some, an, another machine, and you talk to the process, and you can talk in two different modes, one in the synchronous call, that you make the call and wait for the reply, or asynchronous call. You just send the, you know, some code to the other side and let it come back later, and you'll check the result later when you see fit. And then there are some issues in terms of, hey, do I want to send the whole chunk of data over there? Or do I just want to send some code over the other side and tell them to oh, run this code for me with the data that you have and return back some results, right? So there are some good, uh, I say, design operational freedom that you have. But then you think, hmm, data. If I have a lot of data, one I don't want to send over, you know, even with compression and uh, you know fast network and everything. I might want to do shared memories, you know, in a single host, so that two processes can talk, you know, look at the same data, and then you get into shared memory programming, which is not for the weak of heart, but you can do it. It's not really included in Q. You have to do it yourself, uh, but People have done it. I've seen some mention of it. I don't know exact details, though. But I assume that you can do it, and you can, you'll have to deal with all the sorts of concurrency issues that you so far have avoided, and deal with the uh, nitty gritty OS and uh, hardware and tuning and all these things. Then we have an issue of a, you know, N cores that we, uh, multi-core era that we live in. My phone has four cores. This laptop is several years old, has four cores. Uh, I can go out and buy, for a price of a small car, like 200 you know, core machines today, right? Octor Xeon with 36 cores or something like that. 36 you know, hyper-threads. And it'll go on and on and on. In that situation, uh, if your KDB if you're using KDB mostly for you know, massive queries, your pH, I think, works out beautifully. But from time to time, you're not running the queries all the time, and you have the core, you know, cores kind of lying around, then you might want to do something with those cores. And I'm going to skip this uh, P-thread related uh, rant because it's not healthy for you or nor me. And then I'm going to talk, I'm just going to throw in a caveat about that what you're trying to do, whatever you try to do, don't try to circumvent whatever KDB has. KDB s still remains single-threaded write operation. And if you try to bypass that, you will be really, really sorry. And in other words, don't, con don't, don't complain to me. That you did something wrong. And uh, you should like, run the KDB in multi-threaded mode uh, in the configuration. That's just giving it minus port number uh, when you start up your KDB. 
And then this, I'm just, I'll show you this code demonstrating very simple programming model. And this is the code that just ran that you just saw. What I do have here is Pong, which is just a function with two arguments. Pipe and arcs. Pipe is you know, supplied by uh, what calls Pong, and it gets back to what calls Pong. So below, actually, Pong 0, I start with Pong 0 is, I'm just calling a function called new with Pong as an you know, first argument, and some arguments values I'll pass on. So this is my uh, starting a new, spawning a new thread here. So I'm, and then Pong starts running, and Pong says, okay, I'm gonna start up, and I'm gonna wait until I receive ping. Uh, then I'll stop, I'll send ping back and stop, but then until I receive ping, I'll do some work here. And that's what you saw in terms of CPU you know, firing up. So what I do here is then, okay, start my Pong, Pong zero, and then I say, hey Pong, do some work. And work comes in, and hey, it's not ping, so Pong does work, and wait for more. And then I can just repeat sending, Pong, do more work. Okay? And also, I started up with not just one Pong, Pong zero, I started a whole bunch of Pongs. Pong zero, one, two, up to, you know, so I, I started up a Pongs. And then I can do, send them as a, okay, Pong zero, do some work. And then I do one, two, three, four. The other ones, do some more work. And then I call the rest, you lazy bums, do more work. And then my CPU is all packed and Pong's busy working. And then when I'm done, when I'm okay, so I didn't show, I don't show it here, but here I can say send Pong, this time ping message. And then Pong gets ping and says, ha ha, free to go home. And Pong shuts down. So then everything shuts down cleanly. Okay? So it's a fairly simple programming model. All I do is I spawn a new thread, and I have a control handle pipe there, so I, I can send a controlling message back, back and forth. So in, inside the Pong, I have to have some logic how to respond to the controlling message. But then the message here, implied message here is that multi-threaded programming is heck of a lot simpler in this fashion. You're not joining threads. You're not getting into like, oh, I have to have, all, have a mutex and I have to get into critical region. Oh no, I have to have two mutexes together. Oh, which order do I you know, lock and unlock? What if if I deadlock across the two threads? Oh, what if if I have stay rise? Oh no, all these pro problems were the actually original reasons why you know, KDB started as single threaded writes because all these problems are nasty, nasty problems, so hard to get right and so on. But with this style of multi-threaded programming, much of the problem goes away. Okay, again, simple programming model, I just wanted to emphasize that, so I just replaced the word Pong with just funk. You know, so whatever function you have. And um, I, instead of using word control, I just, I'm just saying here, control, control, okay, send control, some message, don't stop, you know, whatever message you send back and forth, it's the same, same deal. And I'm just starting a function. That's all I'm doing. Okay, slightly more. Inside, okay, syntactically, I think I have a mistake somewhere here, but then never mind. Inside the inside whatever function I define, I can write some more code that says, "Hey, um, a function starts up with uh, some initial argument. Then initial argument you can use it to kind of configure your function, com com configure your environment, whatever. And inside the code you can have it can be a pops up code, you know, reply request reply style code or whatever else." to get some you know, chunk of data you want to compute with this function into the function and out of the function. So I just elided that with you know, italic code. And 
you have some freedom to do that. And now we're getting to slightly esoteric territory, but I think uh, this is where the, so far what I've shown is all very, very, very possible with, you know, you can do it with C, you can do it with Python, and so on and so on, you know. Okay, Python too, yeah. But this is hard to do with, say, C or C++ or even Java. The, the reason is, when I say, this time I named my function just compute, imaginative, and I'm just putting in, you know, start your compute with this thunk, whatever it is, right? But then if you think about it, I can even, I can push anything that Q supports, any data type, Q supports into the thunk, and then go through the computation with the thunk. So I'm not just moving data around, I'm, I can move my code around too. Basically what I've so far kind of told you in an abstract fashion is that you can, you have a full control as to, hey, control messaging, how do you control your code, and how you, what kind of data it works on, how data gets there or not. Uh, and you can do even advanced stuff, like I'm just defining some kind of protocol of how my application or how my computation works and how I deal with the data and so on and throw them around freely. And these two points of the control and data flow, freedom designing control and data flow, and integrating them nicely, is now actually done with open source library called Zero MQ. Some of you may have heard about it, and it's getting more and more popular. Uh, it's basically a very, very high level socket, network socket, programming um, library. And, but then what Q brings into the table, because the Q is functional language where everything is a value that you can pass around, you have a, you can do some advanced programming style to suit your need. And if I want to pass around my functions or the code in say something like C, that would be a little bit of a nightmare or even Java, that would be a nightmare because boilerplate would be so much. So basically, what I have shown you is basically marrying a zero MQ, which is just a transport layer with lots of options for um, laying out your data network. And CZMQ is done by the same people who done zero MQ, but it gives you somewhat higher level uh, binding of this functionality. And it also gives you this multi-thread programming API. And uh, QZMQ is the Q bindings, so that you can use CZMQ library from Q. And I just put it up to GitHub. Uh, it's open source, and it just gives you one more freedom to you know, design your architecture because you can move not just data around, you can also move code. You know, whether you, you do it everything right with that freedom is, well, it's up to you. And since you guys have been nice, I'll just show you one more demo. It's the same as the echo you know, before, but this time I'm just, I just create a dictionary. There are a bunch of keys, you know, sync, act, neck, quit, you know, just random words. Um, and each has some related code in here for that in the dictionary. I just pass the dictionary to my protocol actor. And then in the code, what I'm doing is, uh, hey, uh, is command is what I received from my pipe, from my control. And there is a command, uh, well, do I, do I have the legit, you know, protocol word from, you know, in the command, then they say, okay. Then, then I say, hey, okay, that's nice. Then I'll just run the thing. And then if not, I quit. 
So this is uh, where magic is happening. I get the protocol, which is this. I just look up the protocol for the command I receive. And uh, I launch the code in the dictionary corresponding to the command. Application protocol as you see fit. Try to do that with your whatever else. Then protocol design is one thing. Protocol implementation is another thing. People get both wrong, and until you know they won't, they don't realize until too late. The benefit here in, in the what where Q is really, really, really strong here is that I can write it in an interpreter, right? I can just try it out my protocol as a simple dictionary, add one word, you know, add a little bit of code, match that code, and fiddle with it, run through, whatever. I don't even need this whole thing to actually because all I have to do is just define protocol, you know find the matching code, run it, see what happens, and so on. I can play with it, and that will be, the, my play time will be much, much shorter than your compile time with some other you know, languages out there. So I think this is very powerful, maybe all too powerful. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I I can understand why, you know, for example, Arthur will be very, very, very much, you know, be careful not to put multi-threading inside the inside the KDB itself. I very much understand that. I mean, that's the right thing. But this is just a library. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can just add on and you know, you know, see if it fits your architecture or not, and play with it. Okay. So that's my story. Thanks.